Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing another tutorial. I said I was going to do this a while ago, uh, but things have just gotten really crazy. But I have time today, so here it is guys. Let's talk about microphones, sound, and how to make yourself sound really, really good. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing that we did during the webcam test. This is what it sounds like when everything is set up the way that I, I personally do it. Uh, obviously, I usually keep my mic further away now. Um, that's just a preference thing. If you don't want your microphone on camera, you can do that. Um, when I use my green screen, I just don't like having the bar kind of floating there, so I've decided to move it away. I can show you guys that too, but this is what it sounds like. And uh, let's do the same thing and go and see what it probably sounds like for a lot of you who are doing this for the first time. Time. Let's go. Okay, so now we've gone to the setup that a lot of you probably have uh, as you guys start off. Just a, a simple headset microphone, and uh, we're not actually using this. There's no tapping, but if I tap here, you guys can hear. I'm sorry, headphone users, uh, that this is probably sounding horrible in your ears, but uh, we can move this away for now, and we'll bring it back later on. But right now, I am using the microphone that came with my headset. Uh, I am using the HyperX Cloud 2s. Um, the microphone on those are really good, but right now, it's probably really hard to believe that. Step number one, guys. This is the most important thing. Move your microphone away. Don't be afraid. Uh, these are not... Um, uh, dynamic microphones like you see on stage uh, if that's the case then yeah you want to be pretty close but these microphones are really sensitive so if you just move it away and slightly lower um, you might lose some volume so we can fix that uh, afterwards but it should sound a lot clearer and it should sound less distorted okay so now that we've got a microphone that is usable uh, let's work on a little bit of the volume. Uh, obviously, the popping is going to be really hard. You have to run a lot of tests to see how you talk. Some people, like myself, uh, dictate very, very strongly, so I pop very, very easily. Popping is the <laughs> sound. Uh, sorry again, guys. Um, but it, some people uh, pop a lot. I, I tend to pop a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm a theater actor. I, I enunciate quite powerfully. Uh, so I, I tend to pop microphones. Uh, that is why you use the foam here. This foam is a, a bit of a pop filter. It's not a very good one, but it helps to reduce the breathing that you do into the microphone so you don't hear it so much. Um, and it helps reduce the, the plosive sounds. Plosives are those P's, the T's, the B's, uh, and, and helps you sound a little bit clearer. So. Now let me show you on screen what we can do to help with the volume a little bit because as you guys can tell I am definitely a lot quieter now. If you see here you can see where my microphone is reacting and it's right at the green which is ideally where you want it. Now I like my microphone a little bit hotter. Uh, a big note is never let it really reach the red. The red is when you're starting to distort which is what you don't want which is what happens when I put my microphone right there. See how it's really distorted? This sounds like a lot of the early 2000s uh, Let's Play videos which is not what we want. We want it to be clearer, we want it to be further away, but as you see, when I move the microphone away, we lose a lot of the volume. So, what you can do is click this little gear, and you can go over to filters, and that'll bring up this window right here. So at the bottom, we're gonna click the plus, and we're gonna go to gain. Now here, uh, you can name it whatever you want. Here, uh, it's not adding any digital uh, volume to it, but we can actually do that manually here. So if I turn it up, you can see that now um, I'm more in the yellow, which is roughly where I like to sit. I like to sit at, at the edge of the yellow and green most of the time. Uh, obviously, depending on how you talk, you're going to get uh, a variety of stuff. So if you're a big screamer, um, you, you may want to be careful about turning this up too much because... Ah! completely pop the microphone by doing that. Uh, I'm more of a quiet speaker, uh, except when I'm playing horror games, uh, but we can do something to mitigate that. So this is how we get the volume up. So now you guys should be able to hear me a little bit cleaner, a little bit clearer. Uh, I want to sit at about five decibels, um, and, and that should be okay. Now, one of the things you guys need to keep in mind is... Um, your microphone will be different, you will be using different things, uh, different settings, and that'll affect things in different ways. Obviously, if you're using, you know, like a $20 Turtle Beach headset versus a $200 A40s from Astro, uh, your microphone is going to work differently. Bad microphones are just bad microphones. There's not much you can do about fixing them. We could try to work on it, but uh, this video should at least make it sound better. Um, I've never actually set this microphone up for the stream. I only use it when I'm actually playing 
privately, like on PlayStation or whatever. Uh, I never really use it for the computer, but I thought this would be a good example for those of you who only have headset microphones. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go back to the main screen. We've got a gain going on. So, we actually want to add a compressor, which is going to actually stop the sound from going too far. So what a compressor does is, when you're speaking, uh, the microphone obviously picks up a wide range of stuff. If you're really quiet, it'll pick it up, but it'll be quiet. So if I'm talking like this, the volume is really low. Uh, it'll pick it up really, really quietly, and if I yell, ah! It's really, really loud and distorts. So what a compressor is going to do is actually compress the volumes. The low volumes will be boosted up and the high volumes will actually be brought down so that way things kind of balance out a little bit more. Uh, I am going to put a link down in my description where you guys can download this. It is a uh, the VST plugin. Uh, this is what I use for everything as you guys can see. Um, let me bring the screen back up. Uh, as you guys can see, I've got a bunch of them here. I've named them what I want them to be, but they're all VST plugins. So the VST is a little bit easier for me to use. So I'll put a link down in the description, like I said. So all you're going to do is uh, install it, and then once it's installed, uh, you may have to restart OBS, but then it will appear. So you're going to go down here and click VST, and we're going to add a compressor. Now I've already got one, so I'm going to just name it Compressor 2. Please select the plugin. So here, I use Rea Comp. So that is what I'm using as my compressor. Then you're going to click Open the plugin. So you're going to see how it bounces up and down. So this is pretty much where my volume is sitting at all times. So to compress the sound, I usually bring it down to about, you know, just below where I normally talk. So that way it is constantly compressing everything. And then the ratio is pretty much what you're going to want to mess with. I have done sound for live bands for years. Uh, I'm not much of a studio sound guy, so I don't really know what everything else does, but I know that this is what works for me. Uh, so I usually put it at about two, uh, the, the ratio, two to one. So basically meaning for every decibel that it goes over, it's going to compress. Um, and as you guys can see, this red line here is actually compressing the volume. So now I shouldn't pop so easily. So, ah! it barely touched the red line. Uh, I'll show you guys that on my window here. So here's my window, whoops. Here's my window, follow the mouse right here. If I turn it on and I go, ah! See how it's staying within the yellow, ah! If I take the compressor off, ah! completely redlined. So the compressor stops that from happening. Uh, so that is what you guys want. You guys want the compressor on. Uh, for a headset mic, this should make you sound a lot better. It should make you sound a lot cleaner. A lot of headset microphones are very, very limited in what they can pick up. So you shouldn't really hear too much background noise. Uh, so we'll discuss any kind of noise cancellation and stuff uh, with the next microphone. But if you're using a headset mic, this is pretty much all you need to do, and your microphone should sound a lot better. Okay, for those of you who are upgrading something a little bit better, let's uh, move on to the next microphone. So, as you guys can hear, the quality is definitely much, much higher. Uh, the microphone is bigger, uh, and it's able to pick up better sounds. But there are downsides to better sounds. Uh, you guys will be able to pick up everything in the room, which can be a very big hassle. Things like echoes in the room will really, really stand out with this kind of microphone. Um, I have a UM2 Behringer uh, DAC. If you guys don't know what a DAC is, it's pretty much the, the interface that allows the microphone to talk to your computer. Uh, you don't really need to go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a good DAC. Uh, I spent 70 bucks on mine. Uh, that's in Canadian dollars. I know it's cheaper in the States. Uh, I don't even know if this is um, a current one anymore. I've had it for a couple of years now. But it does what I need to do. So on the left is an XLR input. Uh, right next to it is a half inch input, which is usually used for instruments. You can find XLR to half inch, so you could do two microphones technically. Um, the quality may be a little bit different with it. Like you, you can't really use a condenser mic in the half inch because uh, there's no electricity coming through it. Uh, I'll explain that in just a minute. And then there's a direct monitor button. What that does is it actually sends the direct feed from your microphone into your headphones. Um, it's a live feed, so there's no delay. Uh, there is a way to do it on the computer, but there's usually like, you know, a fraction of a second of a delay, so it feels almost like an echo when you talk, and it can kind of mess you up. Uh, this one's direct, so it's literally like you're just talking right into a speaker, and, and you just hear it. It also stops you from getting confused, because sometimes it's, it's hard to hear yourself, so you start to pronounce things awkwardly, I guess. 
Uh, but that's what that microphone button does. And then the last one is actually the headphone jack. Uh, the headphone jack is um, exactly what it sounds like. It's your headphones. You can hear um, your computer sounds and everything through it, depending on how you set up the computer. Uh, you'll hear the direct feed through that, so that way you can hear your microphone. Uh, if you guys aren't comfortable with it, you can always just plug your headphones into the computer. That's not a big deal. Um, but I would highly suggest using the one on the DAC. And then lastly on the back, there's just a USB port, and that's just how it connects to the computer. Uh, let's move on to the microphone. So I am using an Apex 43 5B uh, microphone. It is a condenser mic. Uh, if you guys don't know what that means, the most basic way I can I can describe it is uh, a dynamic mic is the ones that you see on stage that they hold right up to their mouth. Uh, those ones don't use electricity, they're not active. Whereas this actually uses an electric magnet, I guess it is, um, and it makes it ultra sensitive. So you don't have to speak directly into it. Um, but that also means that it can be very, very sensitive to the sounds around it. Um, but it does give a very clear sound. Uh, the one thing is you do need a power source. Uh, they call it phantom power, uh, which gives it some electricity in order for it to run. Don't worry, it's not going to shock you if you touch it or anything. Uh, it just allows it to work properly. And the last part is this shock mount. Uh, it kind of looks like a cradle or like, I don't know, you guys see it in the professional um, you know, videos and stuff. Mine's not an expensive one. It actually came with my microphone. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but my microphone was only about 70 bucks, so don't go out and buy the most expensive condenser mic. You can get a really cheap one. Uh, I actually suggested one to uh, somebody who comes to the channel quite a bit, and uh, they love it. Uh, you can just get them on Amazon and everything for, for pretty cheap. I got this at a local music shop, um, just because I'm impatient. Uh, anyways, the shock mount, what it does is it actually stops the shock from things banging on the desk going through the arm and into the microphone. Um, I don't have a way to mount this directly to my shock arm anymore or to my boom arm anymore. So I, I can't show you the exact difference. But if I tap on my uh, desk, I'll show you. There is some noise, but it's not uh, an excessive amount of noise. Uh, but if I do tap on the cable, which you can kind of see right here, um, there's a lot more noise. That's pretty much all it's for. If you're not touching your microphone, it's not really mandatory. But I would suggest spending the extra 15 to $20 on one um, just to help. Because there are times where you're going to be typing. Or if you're playing games on the computer and not on a console, you're going to be clicking. And, and it, it's going to be heard through the microphone. Okay, that's pretty much all for the setup. Let's move on and talk about the actual uh, computer side of setting this up. Okay, so we've been staring at this screen for the whole time. One of the things that I gotta tell you that you need to start with setting up right away is actually working with your device settings in your Windows settings. So here we've got my device properties. Uh, depending on what version of Windows you're using, it's gonna be different. But, you know, I went to the sound uh, settings and then I went down to my input which I'm using the USB audio codec, which is what my DAC is. It'll pop up differently depending on what kind of DAC you're using. And then you go to manage sound devices. Oh no, device properties, sorry, device properties. So that brings up uh, this, which allows me to rename it if I want to. Uh, and then the volume. So this is the most important part at this step in the game. You want to mess with this. My suggestion is to actually use your OBS. So as you guys can see right here, you can see my microphone moving, right? Uh, a lot of these automatically start at 100%. But as you guys can see, even if I whisper, I'm redlining really badly. So you want to turn it down fairly low and then work your way up. Now, I know mine sits comfortably at around 75 to 80, somewhere in there. And the volume is usually okay for my voice. So I usually sit at about 78. I don't know. I don't know. That's just the number that it kind of works for me. And that is what you're going to want to use in order to make sure you're not distorting right away. When I first got this, it distorted like crazy. And I just didn't think of the Windows setting right away. Uh, so I was struggling quite a bit, but now that helps a lot. It's going to help at least keep the volume at a reasonable level. So now that Windows is set up, let's talk about OBS. As you guys can see, I've got a whole bunch of filters. Okay, I removed it all. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, let's uh, start here. So we're going to go VST plugin, noise cancellation. From here, we're actually going to pick, um, if I can remember correctly, refer. 
I don't know what it's actually used for, but that's the one we're going to use. So you're going to click that, open plugin interface, and now here you can see a bunch of sound waves. This is pretty much all the range in the equalizer that my voice sits at. Obviously, I don't have a lot of highs. I have quite a bit of lows. Uh, my voice isn't super deep, but the way that these microphones work, they pick up the lows really well. So you're going to go to subtract. You're going to go to automatically build noise, pro noise profile. You're going to want to sit silently. I don't know how much you guys hear around me. It probably shouldn't be too much because the house is silent right now. But normally, like I have a fan going or an air conditioner or whatever, you would hear that in the microphone. This is going to actually cancel those frequencies out so you don't hear that happening anymore. So as you guys can see from here, there's not a lot of noise happening, but it's cutting off whatever this is. Um, if there was any noise, that's when you guys would hear it cut off. So that's pretty much getting rid of those background fan noises, or sometimes, you know, your computer can be loud. It'll get rid of that. Okay, on to step number two. Click here, VST plugin. Now we're going to use a noise gate. What is a noise gate? It's exactly what it sounds like. There's a gate, and unless something is loud enough, the microphone will not open that door to allow the sound in. It'll actually shut it off. But if something is loud enough, the microphone will open and allow you to, to make the noise. Uh, and then once that loudness stops, it closes it again, and then the sound stops. This is really good if you've got, you know, people that are outside your room watching TV or, you know, kids running around or whatever. Uh, you can set this to at least mitigate their sound from coming in at all times. Once the gate is open, you will hear them, but at least you won't hear them in those moments that you're just sitting quietly and playing. This one, we're going to go to Rhea Gate. I'm sorry if I'm saying it in a really funny way, guys. I don't actually know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but that's what you're going to click. Then, open the interface. It looks exactly like the compressor, um, which is not by accident. It's doing pretty much the same kind of setup that you are going to be doing. You want to see where you talk uh, to make sure that you're louder than the gate. If I turn it up too loud, watch what happens. I have to talk loud. I have to talk really loud for you guys to hear me. And even then, it was still cutting me off because I'm not consistently loud enough. So what we're going to do is actually sit quietly. And then we're going to set the level just above the noise level that you have for quiet. So what I tend to do is I actually click the microphone, uh, the, the mouse, and wherever the mouse click is, that's pretty much where I set it. My place tends to be pretty quiet when I'm streaming, so it's not too bad. Okay, step number three, you guys. Now we're going to add the compressor. These two steps that we just did are more important for this kind of microphone because obviously it is much more sensitive. The headset microphone doesn't necessarily need this. Uh, you could add it if you're in a very loud environment, but it probably won't help very much. Uh, with these microphones it does now the compressor helps pretty much everywhere so let's add the compressor to this open the plugin as i explained before you're just going to be talking and you're going to set it pretty much at where your level is sitting and then you're going to turn it up to about two and <clears throat> that's about it now i can feel free to talk as loud as i want and i'm not worried so much about hurting you guys uh, with how loud things are but that's pretty much it for the microphone you guys now let's just talk about a quick leveling of game versus your voice a lot of streamers have their own preferences on this they either get the game way too loud and you can't hear the streamer or the game is at a whisper and all you hear is the streamer so you miss a lot of the sound effects you miss a lot of the music in my opinion you do want it to be nicely balanced almost like a song you want the voice to sit on top of the video game but not leave the video game in another room basically so let's set that up real quick okay guys so i've got my game set up uh everything's connected now Depending on what you are using, uh, I don't know every capture card and how it works. So depending on what you guys are using, the the label in the audio mixer may be different. You may be setting up something differently in order to get the sound to work properly. But basically what you want to do is compare my voice where you can see here, it's uh, basically bouncing in the yellow. The game could go just as loud. But now the problem is my voice is getting lost within the music of the game. Um, I, I could even, you know, I, I could get into a level just to kind of show you guys. Okay, so here we are in a level. As you guys can see, the game and myself are, are competing for noise. Um, it's really hard to hear me, uh, especially if there's, you know, loud things going on. Like if I'm jumping around and stuff, the, the game is going to be quite loud. So, on average, you want to keep the game just below the yellow and keep yourself just above the yellow. 
just barely. Uh, that'll allow the game to actually have its loud moments and compete with you, uh, obviously, and, and your voice will still pop. My voice should sound good compared to the game right now. Uh, depending on what game you're playing, you may want to turn it down a little bit more, you know, especially when you get levels that are all, you know, sound effects and explosions and all that stuff. You may want to turn it down slightly more. The rest of the game may be a little bit quiet, but, you know, there are people that actually play like this. Yeah, if I'm quiet, you can hear the music, but if I'm talking, you lose a lot of what is happening in the game, and you don't really want that to happen. Uh, so I, I like to sit right around here, right right, basically reaching the green and yellow uh, border. Um, and you guys can hear the game, you guys should be able to hear me just fine. And uh, that's it, guys. That's, that's all there is to it. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. That should make your microphones sound a lot better. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're using a headset microphone to start, if you're using a fancy microphone, uh, all this will apply to everything. Uh, you know, the Blue Yeti, the, the Blue Snowball, um, you know, a, a full DAC and, and com condenser microphone, uh, a headset microphone, as I showed you at the beginning. It should sound good, you guys. You should be a lot happier with your sound. Your viewers will thank you because many, many viewers, as I know, wear headphones and, uh, listening is a huge portion of what you are enjoying on a stream. I know I personally sit and listen, uh, but if I can't hear the game and all I hear is the voice, or if the voice is super distorted, I'm instantly having a hard time paying attention to the streamer and to what they're saying or what they're trying to convey to us. Um, sound is really important, so that should really help you guys. We've now covered lights and camera and sound. Uh, the last thing to do is really green screen, and that should allow you to have a very good looking stream. Uh, I'm proud of how my stream looks and sounds. Hopefully this helps you be proud of how your stream looks and sounds. Remember guys, give it your all. People will support you no matter what you do. You don't have to spend all the money in the world in order to be a successful streamer. Just put a little bit of time and effort in, and you can actually make low budget stuff sound and look as good as high budget stuff. Alright guys, I hope you found that really helpful. Don't forget to leave a like if you're new to the channel and you like these tutorials. Let me know in a comment down below. Subscribe, hit the little bell. I do stream about five days a week and uh, I, I try to make videos at least once a week. Alright guys, that's it from me. Have yourselves a great day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.